what's your concern with the people in the middle when they're looking at RFK? Do you think uh, RFK hurts more a Biden or you think he hurts more a Trump vote? Oh, no, I think he hurts Biden. Why is that? Um, because I think a good chunk of the, the people that would vote for RFK are people who would have voted for Biden but can't anymore. They just they just don't support what Joe Biden is doing. So they're looking for an alternative. RFK is not conservative. I mean, he like he a lot of mega people agree with him on the covid policies and the vaccines and stuff. But apart from that, I mean, he's pro Green New Deal. He's pro a lot of policies that the MAGA movement does not support. So I just don't. Oh, well, and I guess if you're talking about folks in the middle, that's why I say they're, it's more likely to be Democrats because his policy is a traditionally his platform is a traditionally Democrat platform, uh, with the exception probably of vaccines. But everything else it, He's going to pull from the Democrats. Are you on the same page, Tom? Um, <clears throat> I'm mostly on the same page. Um, Patrick interviewed him on a live podcast we had here. He, mm -hmm. he and his team graciously came here, you know, brave to get in front of any microphone. I think that's the right thing to do in election year. And Pat interviewed him. There was a couple answers he refused to talk about, which I think really put off the conservative vote. You know what I'm talking well, about? One of the ones was about uh, puberty blockers. Mm -hmm. And but he changed his position. I mean, even on the bottom of it now it says, hey, you know, he's changed his position. Because when I said, what do you think about puberty blockers? What do you think about transitioning? He says, well, I haven't done enough research. so I don't have an opinion on him. Like, you can't say something like that. But then the answer said he changed his position four months later. It's all over Twitter. So position has been changed. We're going to see what's going to happen with him. But I'm, I'm curious to know if he is going to take from the left or the right. He's going to take from Biden or if he's going to take from Trump. We'll see what, what role he's going to play. Ideally, I'd like to see him working closely with Trump, because if Trump wins and he assigns RFK to say, your job is to go investigate Fauci, that is the guy Fauci does not want to go investigate him. Yeah. So it, it, can you imagine that... that uh, relationship there with Trump and Fauci and says, you go after Fauci? I think that's a brilliant play. And not to say something inappropriate here, but I will. Um, and that is <clears throat> make RFK Jr. the modern day uh, chairman of the Warren Commission for the, oh. for, <laughs> the, for, the COVID fiasco? for the COVID fiasco yeah. Yeah. Uh, would be very strong. And I think I think Trump is reaching across. I was very impressed with his performance at the Libertarian Convention. Mm -hmm. Not everybody agreed, but he stood there, stood his ground and says, look, let's partner together. I'm not here against you. I'm together. And so to your previous question, I think the impact of RFK is 80 percent uh, pull Biden mm -hmm. and 20 percent percent pull Trump. I don't think it's zero, but I, I'm really only have it PBD at about 80, 20. We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen there with the two. I think he's got a voice and he's got a loyal audience. Yeah, no, he does. By the way, would you love to see RFK Jr. on Capitol Hill sitting there as the chairman of the commission <laughs> asking questions? Listen, he, he, they, they, their camp made a video this, this, this week and I described RFK as a kind of lawyer you don't want to go up against because I've worked with so many. We've spent, I don't know how much money on lawyers. Just the last five years, we probably spent four or five million dollars on lawyers because selling the company, doing this, doing that, you're always, you know, hiring lawyers. Fortunately, they were transaction. Yeah, criminal. it was different kind of lawyers. But even most lawyers are just wanting to quick to settle. Let's just go settle, right? right. Then you got those that want to fight. Then you got those that are just like pride and they're going to get through the end. Then you got those that are true believers, annoying that once in a lifetime type of a lawyer. This is a guy that's not going to slow down. He's, he's the annoying lawyer you don't want to face. That's how I describe him. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.